morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Welcome to Stock Talk with Ricky and Goose. I'm actually flying solo today. Uh, Goose has lost his voice. His kids were home all last week from spring break. And uh, I'm assuming he must have had to use his voice a little more than usual to keep the kids under control. My kids are actually off this week for spring break. So I'm assuming that means Monday I'll probably be missing this with no voice and Goose will be taking over. Um, but uh, welcome. We'll, we'll make this a great show nonetheless. Um, I hope you guys have checked out StockTraders.net by now. We're a leading online trading community. We got free trading floor. We got uh, HD live streaming in the premium room. We have a three-day trial for 25 bucks. You can come check it out and see the live stream. Um, there's so much value that we provide in there. There's uh, discounted trade the news subscriptions. There is uh, widgets such as a, a scanner called TurboScan that's proprietary that catches all kinds of moves. Um, there's all kinds of community members with tons of knowledge and wisdom that share endlessly. Uh, we invite you guys to come check us out. We even have big things on the horizon like Tron, which is a trading program or app or platform that allows the community to take trades together and learn how to control risk as well as remain emotionless, which I mean, let's be honest, trading wouldn't be so hard if it weren't for emotions, right? So this is our way of trying to teach the traders in the community how to keep emotions at bay while making rational decisions. And uh, this this platform is going to be epic. So you guys need to come over and check it out. Uh, you're, you won't regret it. Um, as always, the disclaimers on the screen, I want everyone to make sure you understand that Nothing that we're talking about today is a solicitation to buy or trade any of these equities or uh, make any investment uh, advice. This is merely for entertainment purposes and uh, you need to do your own due diligence on anything you plan on trading. That being said, let's get straight into my list. Um, the first thing I'm watching today is the overall market. And I just want to point out some things, guys, and I am by no means... Uh, a macro guy in terms of ever claiming to know what the, the big picture is doing, but I am a self-proclaimed professional at spotting higher highs and higher lows or lower lows and lower highs. And we have some levels that we're watching. Obviously the 200 day came into play on Friday. We actually closed slightly below it, but we are still higher than the previous low made um, just a few months ago. Or actually, well, almost two months ago, or I'm sorry, my math is off. That's about a month ago. So if that level remains uh, unbroken, I still think this thing has potential to push back up and still be bullish. We are bouncing this morning and pushing up, but if this level were to break, let's just call it 253, that is when I would actually start to uh, take more of a bearish view on the overall market. But as long as we're bullish, uh, there were a few swing ideas like Richard's Sporting Goods and uh, Pandora, which I'm definitely going to keep on watch if the market wants to stay strong. Um, regardless of what the market is doing, I will definitely be watching HTBX, which is the first one on the list today. And they were uh, gapping on <clears throat> news that I, I say is pretty irrelevant. Um, they uh, basically had a drug that they discontinued um, their studies with. But they continued to monitor the people that were treated for it in their clinical study. And two years down the road, now they're saying, oh, well, those 10 out of 10 of the people that met certain criteria um, are still alive. Who cares? They're not even studying that drug anymore. Um, maybe they can use some of the, the things they were using in that drug in future drugs. But regardless, I don't think the news is anything worth uh, a gap. And as you can see right now, it's pretty much given that push back, but it is on watch in case it gets stupid. Uh, this this is one of those turds that if we get a push to 253, you know, I'm going to be all over this one. Uh, the next one on my list, guys, is Drio, D-R-I-O. And this one is actually, I most likely will be shorting this today, guys. The news is so laughable. I mean, if you thought that the HTBX news was kind of lame, Drio just put out news that the FDA gave them the go-ahead to use the new lightning connector instead of a headphone jack for the 
the product they make that plugs into the iPhone. Whoop de do. I'm pretty sure. I got, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that they make adapters for headphone jack to lightning jack, and I'm assuming that should have worked just fine with their current product. But regardless, they felt the need to PR this as some sort of a breakthrough. And if you Google or not Google, if you control F the term warrants in their latest 10K, there's 155 occurrences of the word warrants in their latest filing. They have a ton of warrants. This thing should not, I mean, if you look at the yearly chart, you'll see how it just gives these big pin needle tops. It gives the moves back. Um, I am really, really looking to short this at any push up to about 250. Obviously, I'm not gonna just short the front of it. You guys know me by now. You know that I'm always looking for something to set my risk against. So we're gonna need to see a high and then a lower high and then be able to use our risk management to get in safely and then also to size accordingly. The next thing on the list, guys, is A-K-E-R, Acre, Acre Biosciences. Now, I'm pretty familiar with this turd since uh, I was recently doing a lot of due diligence on Neptune and uh, Acosti, which I believe Neptune sold pretty much their business to Acre. Neptune was a turd, Acre's a turd, but Let's just be res respectful of the, the price action, guys. And this, this daily chart is about as good looking as it gets. It's just been trending perfectly. We're about to have the 20 cross the 200. Um, it's nothing but higher lows and higher highs. And now we're getting that breakout. And you can see I had an alert set. I wanted to know when it was getting over uh, 85 cents a share. It's gapping right through that this morning. So it's not going to be... Uh, an alert that I need anymore. So I'll get rid of that. But we do have the breakout of just over 88 cents. There is good reason for these guys to want to get over a dollar and hold. Um, everybody knows that NASDAQ has requirements such as a dollar minimum bid. Um, I believe that this should be the push that gets over it. I'm looking to actually get long right around this breakout area of 88 and uh, possibly add some around the 200 if we were to pull back that far. I would not hold this thing anywhere underneath the 20 day and I'm going to probably keep it, uh, it, it may sound like large size, but that's because the price, the price is so cheap on it. It's not going to be a very big position for me dollar wise. Um, these things are pretty volatile and it, if you look at the intraday chart on it, <clears throat> you can see that it tends to shake people out that are getting in anticipating this breakout. So. It may still trade a little bit choppy and you need to be able to have uh, some wiggle room on it to allow it to do its thing. ECYT is the next one on my list. And basically, I'm just watching this. Everybody's been watching this. I know it's one of those ones that uh, has garnered a lot of attention recently and you can see why by the daily chart. So it's been holding this trend. You can see that it's having trouble now making new highs. The levels I'm watching on this is obviously the psych 10 level i think actually if we lose 10 25 ish today we may get that wash through 10 and then down here at the 930s is the big wash that i think will actually put us on the backside. but i will be trying to get in before that 930 crack by anticipating it with probably a lower low up here in the tens um, if we can get under 10 today i may take a, a short that i could possibly swing as long as the thing wants to stay weak I'm not going to fight this at all. I, I mean, Twitter's full of stories of people fighting this thing and taking some pretty big hits. So make sure to stay safe on that, guys. But I do think the short is coming, considering it's been really having trouble staying above that 11 after making a lower high. Next thing on the list, guys, is GERN, GERN, which is basically the new ECYT. Um, they, and if you guys remember, if you followed ECYT, all the people that were shorting it the whole way up the front side were like, well, this will probably all culminate in a uh, sell the news event when they present. ECYT presented and it didn't kill the stock. So these guys present tomorrow. The conference they're presenting at is just another one of these bio ones where basically these turds pitch their uh, case to the toxic financers. It's really, I think, just a case where people can all shake hands uh, and say that they have a previous previous existing relationship, which is kind of one of the things that is necessary to do some of these pipes. Um, also, you know, they had a hit piece out, I believe, two trading days ago. It must have been this day here, which was Thursday. And 
I'm sure a ton of people came in heavy short. Lots of them probably made a good amount. The problem is, is that with the move that it had up, it's understandable a lot of these people when this thing closed that week after the hit piece probably decided to swing it and then probably added on Friday and now it's gapping up this morning. You guys can see here on the intraday. We're right back close to those highs. This thing very well could squeeze today, um, cause a lot of headaches for shorts. If we get that exhaustion squeeze uh, move, I think maybe we'll eventually get some lower highs and some way to set risk and this thing could be ready to finally short. Um, we'll see, granted that the, the conference that they're presenting at is not till tomorrow, so it may not be a short today, but it is on watch. And I do want to just point out, guys, it's very ECYT-esque, meaning it could do exactly what ECYT did, which is go a lot further than most people thought it would. Uh, the next thing I just wanted to talk about real quick was Dropbox, which IPO'd on Friday, I believe it was. Yeah, only one day on the calendar. So uh, I just want to point out that we're back above 30. It's been putting in a nice little trend since it put in the lows um, on the close Friday. Um, as long as this thing can show some strength off that psych level of 30, I think we could get a push back up and test the previous day's highs and maybe use that as the first target and then uh, take about half the position off always at your first target, at least for me, and then see what we can get out of the rest of it. Uh, the last thing I just want to briefly touch on is DSS, which traded it over eight times range on Friday at its highs. Um, it looks like it may try to get another push today. I'll probably wait to see what it does around Friday's highs. I'm not going to be eager to jump in short on it just yet. You can see that there's some levels up above two that might be some congestion. But uh, I will just use my strategy to, to look for a short entry on this while remaining safe with good risk management. That's everything I got for you guys. I tried to give you a few more than I usually do just to try to cover Goose's half. Um, hopefully it provides some value as always guys if you don't have a plan you don't have a trade you gotta stay safe out there and uh, let's go out there and crush it peace